So, we have one more talk before our lunch break. Yes. And hopefully before your lunch break as well, because... Uh, <laughs> is this, this going to be a little commercial for some other system? Uh, yeah, kind of. Because I personally really like that with NEOS conference, we're not like, oh, this is only about NEOS. We also actively invite other CMSs and other communities to present their topics here so that we have this uh, interaction and we get to know their concepts. And um, when we get the opportunity to do that vice versa, when, for example, I was at DrupalCon a couple of years ago, I think you're traveling around, usually you're traveling <laughs> around conferences a lot as well. Um, and Sebastian was at the, what was the other one? The Plone conference here in, in Dresden the other year. Um, that's, that's an awesome um, opportunity for exchange. So I'm really excited for, for this next opportunity where Matthias Witte from Tech Division will tell us about NEOS and Adobe Experience Manager. And he calls it birds of a feather. So Matthias is a senior developer and I believe uh, head of CMS uh, at Tech Division. Um, and he has been in contact with NEOS since when it was still called Phoenix. And uh, oh, that was, that's a a lot of years ago, isn't that it? That's long ago, yeah. And we ha we had the Flow 3 Experience Conference in Kolbermoor back then. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. And Kolbermoor was, was a great couple of years where we had uh, Flow 3 Experience and then Inspiring Conference, which right. later on developed into NEOS Conference. So I'm looking forward to Matthias' talk about NEOS and the Adobe Experience Manager. And Birds of a Feather. Before we go, with I have we have a special affiliation actually oh. with uh, Adobe Experience Manager because uh, many many years ago, um, Carsten Dammelkans and me sat together with David Nuschela, uh, who created um, the the pre uh, pre how do you call that? The previous oh. product, which became Adobe Experience Manager. Um, and we discussed the content repository architecture, which we were about okay. to create. That's interesting. Do you know if they incorporated that concept into their software? No, probably the other way around. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, let's hear Matthias talk about NEOS and Adobe Ex Experience Manager. I'm Matthias Witte, I'm Head of CMS at Tech Division and um, I'm talking today about NEOS and Adobe Experience Manager, what they have in common and what are the differences. Um, we are developing on a NEOS project since I think 2013 and on AEM since about a year. Um, about this talk, this talk today is not a classic comparison, as a, so we are not um, comparing the systems which is better or something or which got more features. Uh, it's more about, um, or the goal is more to show some is interesting insights and um, some exciting features and some different approaches for common problems. Um, the talk is um, primarily for um, technical guys, yeah. <laughs> um, so the agenda is um, first um, AEM and NEOS origin, they have uh, the same origin. Um, um, the architecture, the uh, developer perspective and we're looking on some workflows and features um, from the editor perspective. Um, yeah, before um, Phoenix and before AEM, there was say, CQ5. CQ5 is an, was a an, um, content management system. System was 
what uh, was uh, developed in the early 2000s. Um, Adobe bought the product and uh, rebranded it uh, from 2010 till 2012. And from then on, it's called Adobe Experience Manager. Many of the concepts were, were inspiring for uh, Type of 3 Phoenix, which was later rebranded to Neo CMS. So um, this is the origin for both systems. We have a look at the architecture. So there are different um, schemas you can do about the architecture. This is the schema I choose for this comparison or for this overview. On the very top, there's the UI and the customer packages like a site package or um, custom um, plugins with different node types and stuff. Um, below that, there is the content repository and the media assets and a rendering engine. All this um, is built on the flow framework. Um, inside the flow framework, there is the HTTP module with, uh, which um, serves the content. This is built on top on Composer. And if you look on, at AEM, you have the application layer, the AEM itself. Um, this is built on the Apache Sling framework. It's a web application framework. It, you, could, you could compare it to the HTTP module and many other modules inside the Flow framework. Below that, there's the Apache Jackrabbit Oak. It's the um, JCR, it's a Java content repository and the storage layer. Um, the Java content uh, repository is the storage layer itself. Um, this all together is built on um, the OSGI Java container. Um, the content repository, so this looks pretty familiar to you, I think. Um, the content repository uh, is a tree structure of nodes and properties with child nodes. Um, you've got a query logic, um, you've got different node types and different pro uh, properties, and um, you get a path for every item. So you should have a path for every item. But the problem is a little bit in the NEOS project or in the NEOS system or in the NEOS ecosystem, um, not everything is um, using this path. Um, for example, if you do a reference from one page to another, so if you do a link, uh, you create a link um, inside the content to another page, this, this reference is uh, persisted with the identifier and not with the path. Or another example, um, assets are not even, uh, assets do not even have a path, assets have only identifiers. Um, the JCR, the Java Content Repository, has some more features. So um, you have transactions, you have queries, you have a, a certain structure and you have integrity like in a regular database. Um, you also have um, file system features like you can place uh, binaries, you have a certain hierarchy, you can use locking so you can lock certain nodes from, uh, for, uh, um, to prevent the editing of them and you can maintain um, the, uh, the address, uh, access control, so um, you are able to um, fix uh, the permissions or you can maintain the permissions on the repository level. There are also some other good features like uh, multi-value properties. You have, your, you have the possibility to persist unstructured content, you have ordering, full text search, and the little word versioning is a pretty huge word, a huge feature in the back end or in the in the in the logic. Um, 
This means that every change in the JCR is persisted, so you can go back in time to a certain point and look at the um, content in the repository. There's also observation, so you can add um, observables on changes on the um, nodes and the repository. And this all is encapsulated in the standardized API. And um, yeah, this is the JCR standard. So in the JCR or in the AEM environment, everything is content. So editorial content like nodes and properties, this is the same like in the um, NEOS, but also templates, assets. So if you upload an image, it's also um, persisted in the JCR. If you add users or groups, um, if you maintain policies for some um, features the user can do, um, all this information is persisted in, in the JCR. Also the configuration, many parts of the configuration can be done in the JCR and even the code. So we have a quick demo of that. So we can uh, look into the um, the content repository itself. AEM has a built-in editor for the content repository. It's the um, content repository extreme. <laughs> it's called like that. Um, and it's pretty extreme. No, <laughs> uh, it looks very old school, but it's, it's a very useful tool. And um, it's also available, available typically on production environments. Um, so, um, I'll tell you later that that's not the real problem or you have don't have uh, a security problem of that. So you, uh, to give you some examples, we look into the, in, into the structure. I created yesterday a NeosCon um, site project and um, you can uh, see the pages here. Um, this is the, uh, the start page and there are some child pages and the start page has uh, some properties so you can see the properties here and um, you can maintain the access control of this specific node and um, you can uh, look at the replication information so um, yeah you can see much meta data about the um, about the the node here and you can go deeper inside this particular side note and we can see here okay there's um, there's a title uh, content object there's a container inside the container there are teasers that's the hello world text and image node and stuff okay so to give you another example um, you can see here the users so here are users start also so this is the admin user itself and you can see the groups and to give you another example um, of, the, of the possibilities of the uh, CRX um, a content repository, the, the, sorry, the JCR. <laughs> um, you, this is the data um, asset, a digital asset management. And inside the digital asset, asset management, you can see the uploaded files, so you see here is a contact JP, JPEG or um, oops JPEG, and there are you can see where it used. You can see the renditions of this file, the the original file, and other resolutions. Yeah, and even and this is this is uh, very strange, or this seems very strange at the first point. Here is also the implementation of our components in, in this project. For example, there's the Hello World example, and you can open up the template for this um, component. Also, there are the libraries like the CSS or JavaScript and stuff. Okay. So, everything is content, but what is the point? Um, you often have a strong bound between configuration, implementation and content. And if you rely only on 
pass to the nodes and not identifiers. Um, you can rely on certain configurations in your implementation without deploying the configuration. And you can maintain the configuration inside your instance. And this also is the uh, solution for content itself. So if you are planning to um, ship content with a certain deployment, you can do that. So you are able to deploy content, you, you are able to deploy implementation and configuration. And this is also uh, um, needed for the next feature for, or for the uh, feature of versioning. So if you think you are looking, go, uh, if you are going back in time on your, ad, on your content, so you are looking at your start page, for example, and you would like to see how did this page uh, look and behave um, a week or two months before because you're analyzing your data from analytics, you can go back in time and then you can really see how the page looked like and worked like because um, with all these deployments in between, because um, the implementation and the configuration is also stored in the, inside the JCR. So you are able to look at the um, page on a certain point of time. And you are able to maintain the access control. So you are able to configure on the repository level which user or which service is able to adjust certain files. Um, and this belongs also to binary files or styling files and other things like the content. And the entire access concept is um, for this is usable for all files in the entire environment. If you think on deployment and replication, um, like the, the image below, so you have um, an authoring instance where you're editing your content and the authors generate the content. The, if the author publish this content, the content gets pulled to certain published instances and these instances are used by dispatchers to ship the content to the visitors. Um, if you are able to publish content, you are also able to publish and um, and publish configurations and because often the configuration and the content are strong, have a strong bound. But there are also pitfalls with this feature. So first of all, you have a big mind switch. Um, why should I merge content and code? And for this you need uh, or to, to as a solution you need certain deployment strategies or build strategies. Um, for this there is a filter definition um, where you can define what node should be merged, what should mo node should be overwritten and so on. Also the development um, is influenced by this behavior. So most or a huge amount of changes you're doing as a developer can also be done inside the AEM instance in the editor backend. So if you think on templating, you're not supposed to do this inside your um, IDE. You also can do this very easily inside the AEM and pull the code out of the JCR into your workspace. So now we look at the development. Um, first of all, we look how to start a new project and the typical workflow as a de developer. Um, on the new side, if you start a new project, there are certain um, projects which can help you to start. So there's the Neos Kickstarter, which generates flow packages with controllers, views and templates. Um, there's also the site Kickstarter, which generates new site packages with basic node page and a little bit configuration. And there are also um, some cool, really cool community projects like the Codec um, Skeleton 
it's um, it's a nice um, project with um, with different uh, best practices in the Neos project environment, and is it's a very good um, project and an easy project for um, starting projects um, for your own project. On the AAM side, you have uh, project archetypes. Um, which are um, command-based tools for generating um, fully working AEM projects. Um, so it's uh, typically these archetypes are open source projects um, from Adobe itself. Um, you can generate a project, a regular side project or a web app ready project for react or with uh, with react or with angular as a single page application i'm using the single page application software development kit yeah there are different um, um, parameters um, which you can set you can apply uh, starting for for the start a certain country or you can include examples and so on so um, we look at how does this work um, you execute it and it's very straightforward and very fast to create a project now i created a project or i failed okay i failed why i'm not sure exists ah okay so um, I've already created here a project, but it should be very fast. So, okay, but this doesn't care because I generated yesterday already a project for us um, for this for this talk, um, and I show you a little bit about this project. And we don't do the deep talk, so we are only um, scratching on the very first level. So first of all, what you get is an, um, uh, a nice readme, um, how to use this project, how to build, how to test. Um, like we see, there's a fully working environment for tests, for unit tests and integration tests. Um, there are tools uh, applied for static analysis and even there is a front-end project inside this project for creating um yeah the front end libraries with webpack so this project inside this project you get all you need and you can start and there are already some tasks done so um if you look a little bit deeper there are already components with uh, with which come with this project um like um, certain components um content components and um, templates, for example, uh, we can look here a little bit deeper. So here are templates, there are the page content template and some other single page application templates. And this is the interesting part, um, because remind, everything is content. Um, you got a filter. Um, and you have to maintain this filter. So this filter uh, maintains what strategy should be uh, applied if I deploy this project or if I build this project and deploy it into my, into my AAM instance. And this project comes with a pre-configured filter configuration. Yeah, so um, now we go back and we do a little bit editing inside the AEM. So we want to adjust the um, default template. So um, we open it up inside the AEM. We can um, we can do this inside the um, inside our development environment and in, in our IDE. So I can adjust the content here, the, the template for the page content here. So I can adjust the initial content, the structure content, policies, and much more stuff. Um, but um, if you, like you see, you have to maintain XML files and you have to read the documentation, but you can do everything here. 
but if you want you can also do the changes here so you can open the template here hopefully it works yeah it works <laughs> um, and you see the entire template so what you are able to do here is you can add new components to this um, template like we are in the structure tree uh, structure view we are, can edit the initial content and the layout but for this uh, case we only um, change a little bit of the features so we uh, adjust the the um, policies so we want to enable i don't know what should be here something like i don't know the breadcrumb Okay, breadcrumb is also usable. Or what we can do is we can move um, components here. So this is the breadcrumb and you can maintain or you can uh, adjust the, uh, the configuration of this breadcrumb and you can do this. And this is locked so the editor is not able to adjust this. And this component is unlocked so the editor is able to add content here so now we are able to we, we've done all changes here and now what we can do is we can go into our ide and i can say um, i want to get these changes i've done here so and we see the this file has changed um, i think you should be Exactly, the breadcrumb we just added is here and we also adjusted the policy, so we added breadcrumb here, I think, I'm not sure. Breadcrumb, okay, never mind, I don't know where is it stored, um, but it's, it's not so important because um, the um, JCR knows the um, the uh, references and the content gets applied here okay so now we are talking about content management itself um, first of all um, it's about content changes or bulk content changes automation and editor coordination and communication um, Content changes are done in EOS in Workspace. So every change you're doing is inside your personal workspace. Um, if you need the uh, assistance of other users, you can create workspaces where uh, several users are able to maintain the content. You have a preview mode and you have publishing. On the AEM side, you have launches. Um, launch is a concept of um, um, it's a similar concept of workspaces, but a little bit different. Um, in launches, you enables you uh, launches enables you to edit content for a future or a bulk publication. Um, you can create a launch um, of source pages. So you select pages and you do your changes inside your launch copy and uh, changes of the source pages get applied to the launch copy if you don't uh, uh, break the uh, inheritance and after your changes you can promote these changes to the source pages back. After that you can publish the changes onto the publish environment. If you talk in AM of publishing you mean the replication of content from a, um, of a, um, um, authoring instance to a publishing instance. So publishing does not mean publishing content from your workspace or from your launch. So it means replication of content from one JCR instance to another JCR instance or from one AEM instance to another AEM instance. So um, let's do it. Demo time. Um, for example, if you have this, um, this NeosCon site with schedule and speakers and some more other pages, subpages, um, and you want to change the content after the, um, 
after the conference or on a certain date or something, I don't know. So you can select the content you want to get inside this launch and you have to name it. It's like the workspace name in workspace name in the NEOS. So we call it, I don't know, post NEOS con, for example. We want to have the existing content. We don't have a launch date or we can set a launch date. I don't know, it doesn't care at this point. So we can create this launch and I can open it up. And now um, I'm in the editing view of this page inside the launch context. Um, this page is part of the launch post NeosCon. So I can do my changes here. I have to do, I have to break or cancel the inheritance here. Um, okay, I break the inheritance and I want to adjust this text. I say, this is my new text. Yeah. Okay, and I want to, I don't know, I, I leave it at this. Okay, and I say, it's okay for this. And what I can do now is um, I can go into the um, launches overview. I can select this launch and I can promote it. Um, there are certain scopes for this. Um, I first I delete, uh, select delete the launch after promotion and I can promote the full launch or promote only the modified pages. Um, so this is the modified page. I can preview the changes. And now I see the, the um, change page. And this is like a diff view of the content. So <laughs> inside the uh, uh, lorem ipsum, okay, this is not so good. But you see what, uh, what the point is. You can see the changes here and you can close and you can say, okay, oh, okay, I got, got back. I promote this change and the change is done. And the change is now applied into the regular site. Okay, so now we're looking on the automation. Um, in NEOS you have certain tools or in flow to be precise. Um, you have signals on certain layers like, uh, like the content repository flow, NEOS and media module and other modules. Um, and you also have schedulers, as, so you can uh, you are able to implement command controllers and can call them through a Chrome job. Um, these are developer tools only, and um, in Neos, in AEM, you also have these features in the um, Java, but you also have in AEM workflows and launchers. And the workflow and launchers go um, hand in hand with the development tools. So like I said before, everything is content and even workflows and launchers are content. So we have a look on that. Um, what we can do with this and uh, with these tools. So we have workflow models for for uh, first for to look at, at the first part of this um, chain of tools so you have um, different workflow models you can create them as um, as a de developer in your uh, development environment you can also create them here inside the backend on the am or you can adjust them or edit them so we take a look in the launch review um, workflow model. You can open it up. You can edit the workflow model and hopefully it's, it's loading. Um, yeah, it's loading. So you have, you can view the, the, the model. You have simple um, steps you can add. You can add a, um, simple conditionals. You can add 
pre-built um, steps you also can implement as a developer your own steps there are certain interfaces which you can implement and then you get your own steps here a, an editor can edit these um, these um, steps here and can build it it's uh, his own um, workflows so there are different workflows and but it's a bit too deep to look in in every uh, workflow model i want to show you also the um the launchers but first okay the launchers first you can create launchers a launcher is like an observable um yeah, yeah, like an observable on the content repository to do certain things. So you can create your own launcher. Um, you have different event types like created, modified and removed. So if a um, node gets, I don't know, removed and it should be like um, a page node and it should happen in the path of yeah, of NeosCon, why not? And it's only should get applied on the authoring or the publishing instance, I say author. You can add certain conditions here. You can enable or disable features um, and you can select the workflow model. Um, like, yeah, what, what is a good example here? Um, yeah, I'm published from YouTube. So <laughs> uh, if you, uh, I don't know if a YouTube model is here, a no type for, for videos, but you get the, the idea of that. So you can do any no type, whatever. Um, yeah, and you can just create it. You also can do here, not just the path, you can do globbing here. So to give you an example, um, Asset processing, the modification. There are some um, pre built uh, launchers within here. Um, yeah, and much um, automation or a huge amount of the automation is done with the uh, launchers itself inside AEM. You also can start workflows manually, and this is a pretty interesting case. So you can um, select an, a certain node in the tree here and you can say, I want to create um, a workflow um, and select the dedicated workflow you want to do. So I don't know, um, request a copy or publish to YouTube, whatever. Um, publish, publish this to YouTube. And you can select the scope. Yeah, this is right. And you can create it. I don't know what's happening either. I didn't configure anything for YouTube. I hope, hopefully I don't publish anything on YouTube now. <laughs> so um, the launchers allows you to automate workflows and the workflows models and workflow models enable you to define certain workflows and tasks. Um, task chains yeah okay so um, we look back now we are in the editor communication um, often you have problems um, as an editor um, to find the right notes and the right content you should edit or you want to edit so often you get questions like which content should get reviewed or what image is not appropriate and what should I do next. Um, the editors often communicate with URLs. They share the URLs, the screenshots or videos or they do video streaming or something to um, organize the work and the task they are doing. Um, also, you have probably automated tasks. And 
sometimes these tasks go hand in hand. So mind if you um, do something like a translation, ah, probably we do a demonstration. Okay, so we go into the backend of the AM and we want to do a translation. Um, I want to translate this English um, page into German. So I create here a language copy and I select the page. Okay, I want to translate this page, including sub pages. And I want to um, translate it to German. I ignore the configuration. I think it's okay here. And I don't want to create the structure only because it's this is a, this is a bit boring. I want also to cre uh, create a translation project. Um, translate uh, into German. Okay, so I created just a new project. And um, what is this? So this is a combination of automated and uh, currently it's only, there are only automated tasks inside so I can select it and start. But I want to do something else now. I can add, um, I can maintain the users who are inside this project team and get notifications. And I can add new tasks. So I can add a generic test like review, review, review this translation or this automated translation. And I can say it's the assignee should be something like me. Okay. And I can say this is the payload of this project, the German translation. Please review this translation and do your changes. Okay, I can set the task priority and stuff. Okay, I submit it and it's done. Um, what I can do now, I can start the project. So I go, go into the project um, and say start this translation job. And it should be really fast because we don't have many, uh, much content. So it's done, completed one job. But if you look in, in there, there's still an active task. And this is the task I got. So. If you look here, you get an overview of all my tasks and um, yeah, please review the translation. Okay, I don't, I, I, I look at the payload, look what is, what is done here. Okay, it worked a little bit. Epische Reise, stoppen Sie nicht auf halbem Weg. Okay, the translation is not so bad here. This Hello World component could not be translated because it's um, the, the, the the text comes from the um, Java implementation. Okay, this is my new text, nice. But I see there's something wrong. The page, the speaker's page is called Lautsprecher. What's um, not so good here. Um, so what I can do now, um, I go here um, as the editor and say, okay, this page has to be changed. It should not be called Lautsprecher. It's also speaker. Spe spe speakers. Oh my God. Um, and it's fine. And now I can go into the um, tasks and say, okay, I'm done with it. It's complete. Done. Okay. And now if, um, if I'm the, um, um, if I'm, uh, if I had it, had added me as um, a project um, maintainer, I think, I'm not sure, then I get a notification that the task is done. And I also can um, add workflows, for example, to it, uh, which notify me automated by email. And 
other notifications. So lastly, a, a short look into the CRX. So you can also see the, um, the workflows here, um, just to be complete. So every workflow which is added here can also be reviewed and edited inside the JCR. So everything is counted inside AEM. Okay. So um, thank you for listening um, and I hope I inspire you with some insights and wish you a nice conference and a nice day. Thank you very much. back thank you very much matthias for this well what was it an introduction uh, a comparison of neos and adobe experience manager and uh, we're very thankful that matthias joins us uh, now uh, for some questions hi matthias hello uh, thanks so much uh, for your talk and what would you say, um, le le let me dive right in with a very specific question. Um, you have experience with NEOS and with Adobe Experience Manager. And when a customer comes and th the content management system needs to be decided upon, um, how, how do you do that? What's the process there? Um, yeah, um, in most cases, um it's more a strategic decision by the management of the customer. So um, in most cases, it's a big, it's, it's a really huge company and huge company want big products. <laughs> so um, they want first level support, they want uh, legal guarantees. And this is mostly the decision, the main decision done by customer. Um, they want AEM and they don't want NEOS. So there's not really a decision process. So in the, um, in, the, in the projects where you end up using NEOS, which I know that Tech Division does <laughs> NEOS projects, um, what's, the, what's, the, what's the feedback there for, for, uh, from the customers um, you know, who, who use NEOS and which is in, from what you just said, often the underdog product, maybe. Um. Yeah, uh, NEOS is um, like the system you, you, you get in touch and you get a feeling and you're able to use it and you really get fast forward the, the workflows and how does it work and how to use it. And on AEM, you need more introduction. So it's a huge product and you need support. And um, so... For the regular customer, I would say NEOS should be the right decision. And if you have certain requirements, you are going to uh, probably try AEM. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. You mentioned um, uh, the, the content repository, of course, because that's, that's also a very important bit which NEOS shares with, uh, with AEM. So, um, but we at, at very early in time, we took a different route in terms of workspaces. I remember back then when we discussed uh, JCR with David Nuschler, um, uh, the state was that if you want to create a new workspace, basically everything is copied, right? And uh, back then we decided for, for NEOS that we wanted to have these nested workspaces where you have this kind of shine through approach and so on. So do you think that there are like cases for each of these um, or disadvantages, advantages of either concept? And, and probably also a question, uh, considering everything at, as content, which uh, lies in the content repository, that's an important concept also in, in AEM that you even put code in there. Uh, what's your experience Com compared with kind of traditional development where you use uh, have code in Git and, and so on and deploy it independently from the content? Yeah, so um, for the first question, um, I think um, the, work the work workspace module in NEOS or the workspace uh, feature like it's implemented in NEOS is very useful, but you have to understand it and probably some customers 
don't can this. Um, they often have problems with this feature. Um, they are not using it like it should be used. And in AEM, it's completely, completely abstracted from the user. So the user does not uh, recognize there's something like this going on in the back end. And probably this should be um, um, this should be implemented probably or a, a lightweight solution for that in NEOS for the workspace feature. Um, the second question, what was the second question? I forgot. If, ah, okay. If you the put code part. into the content repository, yeah. Yeah, yeah you have to, um, it's, it's really a mind switch. So um, the development is done by Git and you have your local code and stuff. And it's uh, for, from the developer perspective, it's like a regular software project. The main difference is the filtering and the deployment strategy. So you have to maintain your filter logic. You have to be sure what happens with the code and the content on the system. And this is uh, pretty difficult to understand. And from the beginning on, we um, did something wrong at the start. And it's pretty different. And you have to switch um, some workflows here. Yeah, but uh, it also works for us now. Okay. So thank you very much, Matthias, for this uh, comparison and this introduction to uh, Adobe Experience Manager and Neos, and uh, seeing you know the similarities as well as uh, the the differences um, as they do, I think, target different niches uh, of the, of the market, uh, both products. So thank you very much for that, um, and for all the other viewers out there, uh, just some short remarks before we go into our lunch break. So first of all, uh, remember to enter the quiz if you want to win, want to have the chance to win a, a awesome NEOS merchandise package. Um, you can buy the NEOS conference shirt and the uh, NEOS branded FFP2 masks uh, in the NEOSCon IO slash shop uh, website. And uh, as we are a little bit behind schedule, um, we plan to start with the behind the scenes at 2 p.m. And last but not least, before you run away, we do have some more music for you. So here goes Jan.